just a monologue. In fact, you could please break in on me and uh, make it, you know, you get talking and you forget and you're becoming a monologue. Start doing homilies on tape. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Father Rookie, uh, during your your experience and mission to Ireland, uh, you began your healing services, uh, and uh, you spoke about how healing is to be a part of every Christian's life. Uh, what did you mean by that? And, uh, um, well, uh, we need healing every day. Um, we uh, we uh, heal our bodies by eating properly and sleeping properly. If we didn't do that, we would become ill. Everybody knows that. Uh, exercising and so on. Um, so uh, the soul also needs healing every day. That's why... Uh, we uh, pray every day. Jesus gives us the example there. He um, strengthened himself uh, by praying great lengths, even a good part of the night sometimes, because uh, during the day, the people were after him, you know, for healing, or he was preaching to them. So, uh, that healing is an ongoing process. It's, uh, uh, I guess that's about really what, where it what is. What did you learn, uh, recalling from our question in the first interview, uh, you said you learned in Ireland, uh, or discovered in Ireland, uh, your need to be uh, ministering healing to people, praying over people. Mm -hmm. That was your first experience. Yes. Um, and you connected that to healing being a normal part of the, the Christian life. What was that realization? Uh, did, was it uh, just something that you came to understand at that point? Uh, did you learn that or did you... Well, I just came to understand that uh, praying uh, with people uh, and uh, 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 my own uh, praying for them uh, uh, and, and praying and fasting and um, uh, preparing myself to lay hands upon them uh, was uh, uh, the, where the healing was. Um, and even to this day, if I do not uh, pray hours every day, um, the uh, healings do not come take place. You know, it's very simple. Uh, <clears throat> and the fasting, of course, is very, very good. Our Lord recommended that. He told the disciples one day when they came back from a mission, they, there was one young man who needed to be exercised and they could not exercise this young man, so Jesus took him and cast the demon out. And they, they asked him, why couldn't we do that? And Jesus said, this kind is cast out only by prayer and fasting. So uh, much of this uh, is uh, in preparing uh, that's another reason I repeat again that we uh, like to have the power of the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist 
before we uh, have the laying on of hands, um, I, I prefer that uh, to just having a simple ceremony. As uh, the spirit is so powerful in the Eucharist. In fact, in every healing mass, uh, it seems um, a few people at least see Jesus in the Eucharist in the healing masses. And uh, uh, the Lord, as I mentioned before, allows me to see him also. Um, uh, and uh, then another little touch of the presence is the this um, fragrance of flowers. Many, many people perceive this strong fragrance at every uh, healing mass seems. So uh, uh, as Paul, I think, mentions, uh, we are the perfume of Christ. And this is uh, when we stay with him and uh, make our will one with the Father as he asks us to. I hope that answered your sure. yes. query. Uh, second question here. Uh, you spoke in our initial interview of uh, the fact that for a time your healing ministry went on the back burner that uh, after Ireland uh, you went and did other things. Uh, why was that? And, and, uh, well, I uh, answer by saying that, you know, the um, as uh, Mr. Kelly mentioned in a, a uh, talk show in Belfast about six or seven years ago um, that um, the healing ministry is not universally accepted, you know, even by uh, our own people, you know. And, um, it, it, it's um, it, it's not um, uh, considered a, a normal way of um, carrying on our our ministry somehow, um, and um, so uh, uh, the my superiors I am. I'm sure, and I could not blame them for that. Um, after I left Ireland, had me <coughs> uh, do all kinds of other ministries, carry out other 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 um, priestly uh, functions. Uh, um, I was in Rome in. Uh, as an assistant to the general in our order, the Servites, uh, for six years, and then they asked me to uh, conduct a three, uh, a um, an international uh, uh, college in uh, the University of Louvain, and uh, then. I came back to Chicago for a short period, worked in Our Lady of Sows uh, uh, as an associate pastor, and then a general of the order asked me to go back to Europe and um, um, assist the Servites in Germany. So, and I was there for almost five years and so on. And I tried to bring the Servites up to Sweden and the northern countries as well, and spent time up there. And I was in the Middle East a number of times and preaching missions and so on. And um, uh, finally, 
they asked me to do 16 and a half years in the Ozarks and the missions. Where there were very few Catholics in a big territory. I, I had four or five churches there to take care of and um, over 200 miles around. <laughs> so then uh, finally I a superior brought me back to Chicago, a provincial that um, Father Augustine Kubis, Augustine Mary Kubis, uh, whom I had as a student in Rome <laughs> many years before in the 50s. So this was in the uh, 80s. So I didn't really begin this work again until after over 30 years uh, and uh, late late 80s has started again but uh, I can see why they would you know were uh, very hesitant that I continue this work because it it uh, disturbed uh, the hierarchy and the and my and my brother priest uh, on a a little um, more humorous note, um, I was speaking with a very dear man who has been in the healing ministry many years um, in uh, the Houston area, I believe, uh, Texas, in any case, I believe he's in the Beaumont uh, area now, uh, stationed there, but he uh, preaches to priests on healing and uh, deals with doctors and so on. It's, he has a beautiful name, uh, De Grandis. Um, and uh, he's a beautiful priest. But he uh, and I were talking in uh, one time last year together and he um, in actually, actually we were talking behind the church in Saint of St. James in Medjugorje uh, and he had just um, been to, uh, to a um, I believe an American Medical Association meeting and he said that they had passed a resolution at this meeting um, endorsing the great benefits of praying over the patients. And he said the doctors uh, have accepted it. Now we have to pray for our brother priests that they accept because we are trained, you know, to be very critical and so on in these matters. And uh, so I think that's part of it too. So I don't blame them, you know, I don't cast any aspersions on my brother priests or bishops but they're just very cautious and and of course uh, there have been many um, cases of um, uh, hanky pank I guess for want of a better word and we see it on the TV they get uh, some of the people in the healing, they get carried away with too much money and uh, uh, so on, and uh, fame, fortune, and so on. <laughs> they end up in prison and whatever. <laughs> so they have visions of these, this happening, you know. And, and so they're very cautious. I was uh, very honored, for example, in, in that uh, speaking in the same vein. I uh, hope you won't mind my using his, his uh, name, but um, um, we, we were in the Houston, Galveston, Houston Diocese just last month. Uh, and the uh, bishop invited us to come and see him, Bishop Fiorenza. It's his name, a very uh, lovable man. He loves his priests, as one of his priests told me, and I believe it, in inviting uh, 
uh, a rookie priest to come to see him it was a good sign of his love for the priests. In any case, um, uh, he, uh, he had just been um, elected uh, president of the National Conference of Catholic Bishops. And so we felt very honored to be, uh, to be speaking with him. Um, and uh, he wanted to hear about the ministry and uh, uh, how we worked and so on. And so now, um, although he's very cautious about allowing uh, uh, even outstanding priests to come to his diocese, he's uh, now allowing me to come to open, open, uh, without any uh, problem. So um, I was very grateful for that. Off, off the record, I see uh, the same lack of acceptance sometimes of your type of ministry mm -hmm. for the church hierarchy, but I see that breaking down with uh, things like the charismatic renewal. Yes, right. Well, uh, mm -hmm. again, when you uh, count the number of people who are in the charismatic renewal, you see a pattern for the healing, which is one of the charismata, charisma, charismata, plural, is a Greek word for gifts, gifts of the Spirit, the gift of tongues, the gift of prophecy, so on, all uh, mentioned in Paul's um, letter, first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 12, 13. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, th this is a mirror of the whole church, you know, how many are in the, are accepting the gifts of the Spirit, you know, and Pope John the 23rd accepted them and said he wanted to open the windows of the church, let the Holy Spirit in. <laughs> so here we are, the windows are open. <laughs> um, <clears throat> In our initial interview, Father, we kind of walked through the steps of the healing service that you had, the rosary and what that was, the mass and the importance of that, mm -hmm. and the actual prayer. For you. By the way, may I interrupt and say that sure. we pray the uh, rosary of the seven sorrows uh, as a uh, wonderful preparation, uh, softening of our hearts, I guess you would say. Uh, for our healing because when we meditate on the passion and of our Lord and the compassion of his mother somehow our problems uh, don't loom so large anymore <laughs> and they were innocent people uh, without sin Jesus and Mary and yet they suffered more than any other man or woman in history so, excuse me for interrupting you. Okay. How many of us have had to suffer to the point of being nailed to a cross? Yes, right. Not too many. Mm. Mm. Uh, my question was, uh, sharing a little bit, I'd like to, on the video, give a perspective that maybe some people don't experience uh, your perspective. As you are praying over people and they, uh, for healing and uh, serving as God's minister in that capacity interiorly, what what are you experiencing? What can you share that maybe you can give myself or some mm -hmm. viewing uh, insight to your experience as the instrument? Uh, I uh, simply uh, carry out what he has asked us to do. Uh, lay your hands on the sick, anoint them with oil, they will recover. So I'm in continual prayer and um, uh, so I'm uh, uh, 
being lifted up also with uh, doing what Jesus told us to do. Uh, and uh, for that reason, maybe, uh, not maybe, I'm sure it is, uh, the uh, after the Mass, or and after the laying on of hands, even when I've, we have thousands, as we do in Mexico and Ireland and so on, thousands and thousands, um, I feel um, exhilarated afterwards, instead of being tired, I'm lifted up. It's a very un I should be tired, I guess, but <laughs> I feel uh, exhilarated, as I say, and um, uh, ready to <laughs> do some more if necessary. Yeah. I can relate to that as a <clears throat> prior to becoming the video minister at our parish, I did youth ministry. We would do retreat weekends that uh, were very intensive experiences, life-changing experiences for kids. But very much, uh, you know, working overtime, mm -hmm. four and five-day periods. And uh, you had the same experience. A normal person would come to the end of that experience and be exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I would come off those weekends with more energy than I started. Mm -hmm. You had the same yeah, because of kind of I, I reaction. The, the mm -hmm. Lord, uh, just being energized by the Lord's presence as I gave myself over to do His work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. Uh, that's uh, well. Uh, the gospel today in the Mass, uh, Jesus is given. It will be given to you. Uh, uh, overflowing and, and uh, so the more we give of ourselves it seems the Lord the Lord fills us up I, I often think of the, some of the saintly people like Mother Teresa of Calcutta you know she Look, uh, she worked so hard uh, to caring for all the, those who were down and out, and uh, yet she was a, a, a mighty might of energy, <laughs> very just a wisp of a, of a woman, and yet look at all the energy she expended, and. Uh, uh, was able to to do so much. Um, one last question. Uh, all the years you've been doing this and people's lives you've seen changed. Uh, people healed, uh, people reconciled to each other and to God. Uh, is there one experience that uh, you could share with us that stands out in your mind uh, the fulfillment of God's mm -hmm. call to mm -hmm. you as, as his minister well um, I believe um, one of the greatest um, uh, miracles I, uh, since the human person is the great creation of God on earth I would say uh, um, our Jewish convert uh, man in England uh, who is suffering from three major uh, diseases and uh, was healed uh, instantly as we prayed uh, with um, a lady in um, Mary Payton in Belfast, 
she asked for prayers for him. He was in Southeast Asia, in Malaysia actually, suffering a deep malaise as a result of these, uh, well, I'm not talking out of school when I say several of them were addictions. I think he was addicted to prescription drugs for one thing. He was addicted to alcohol. He tells his story in England. Oh, he'll be telling it again in um, another six or seven weeks when we go to England uh, in May or every year. Um, and all of a sudden, as we were praying, they found out the time and uh, meshed uh, with the praying. Uh, he felt like a million and uh, felt good all over. And he thought it was the balmy weather down there. And he got back to rainy England, you know, and uh, that part of Europe, England, Ireland, uh, Belgium, and so on. Uh, when it's not raining, it's going to. <laughs> so he got back to uh, Mary England and still felt wonderful. He started uh, the RCIA program and, and uh, took instructions and was, the following Easter was received into the church. Uh, uh, and he became just a... Um, an evangelist in his work in his work he, he for example he raised millions of pounds uh, for the uh, Balkans during the war there uh, he called it the Medjugorje appeal and, uh, and he uh, he's just uh, a terrific man, now an apostle of Jesus, you know, something like Paul is turned completely around. Uh, he and his wife uh, uh, set up our healing masses, and, and uh, another man I must give credit to also, um, uh, an Arma, Iron Man, who lives in London. Uh, Martin Duggan, and those two are the ones who set us up in England every year. Why, why does that uh, experience stand out the most to you, out of all the other experiences? Well, to, to see what the Lord does with a person, you know, when they turn to Him. From one, hmm? one degree to the next. Yes. Mm -hmm. Before he, as he witnesses, it was all material. He was uh, uh, still is uh, stainless steel industrialist. He, he calls his business Anglo World Steel, and um, there, by the way, he was uh, very. Um, poorly treated for his efforts by a documentary made by the, uh, a subdivision of the BBC and uh, uh, made to look like he was uh, uh, misusing the funds that he had created and so on. And it was made to look very bad. Uh, by this documentary. I believe that they have uh, distributed it over here as well, so it was, it was very terrible um, attack on his uh, character and so on. So, um, uh, if you happen to see that, you'll know it's not true, really. And, uh, he is at peace about it, however. It's, uh, uh, incidentally, we've, we've, uh, I, I was going through um, 
the documents attacking him related to this uh, documentary that was put out and the man uh, it seems from what I've heard uh, his, uh, had a, a wife this producer and his wife had gone to Medjugorje and suffered a conversion experience and uh, uh, he uh, did not accept this at all. To the contrary, he was very angry about the whole thing, it seems, and then uh, uh, it seems to have had something to do with his wanting to uh, make Medjugorje very bad, you know. Give a, I forget what they call this documentary. It's something like the underside, I think, of Medjugorje or something like that. And it's just a very awful attack. They attack Father Slavko, who was this very holy priest. And I think the world of him and behind the scenes in Medjugorje, he lectures all over and so on and uh, even accused Father Yozo in the documentary of Hanky Pank, this very holy man who was the uh, pastor of St. James when the uh, allegedly Our Lady first appeared to those six children, took them under wing and for his efforts was thrown into prison for X number, of, I think, 18, mon 18 months, I think, I'm not sure, something like that. And, uh, not him, I believe it was him. Uh, he visited uh, <coughs> Franciscan University when I was there back in the... Steubenville, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he, was, he was there, and I think one of the visionaries also came with him. Mm -hmm. Yvonne, perhaps? One of the uh, lady, young ladies. Mm -hmm. May have been. May have been. I, I did not meet her, but I met him. Vishka, maybe. Could be. Mm -hmm. Could be. This was She's the smiling one. You would remember her. She's always a you know, very smiling. smiling person. Yeah, maybe. I, mm -hmm. I can't recall. But. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're all set. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I hope I said the right things. Oh, it was wonderful. Uh. <laughs> it's already past tense. Father, do you know anybody at Lackley? Wonderful. Okay, dear. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let's clean the steel. Oh. It's St. Louis. That's a big oven in St. Louis, yeah. Well, they're cleaning bankruptcy.